chair recognizes uh, the gentlelady from Washington State, Ms. Jire, calls the five minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, clearly, there is an agenda here, and it is about impeaching Secretary Mayorkas. I want to take a step back and just say that it is quite stunning uh, to have some of the witnesses here today uh, that have the audacity to come before this subcommittee and attack the current Homeland Security Secretary. Mr. Wolf, who was Chief of Staff to Secretary Kirsten Nielsen, was a key architect of the universally panned by majorities of Americans across the political spectrum, that very cruel and unlawful family separation that was perpetuated by the Trump administration. Further, according to a federal judge and the Government Accountability Office, Mr. Wolf served unlawfully as the Acting Homeland Security Secretary. Mr. Edlow, as Acting Director of U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, helped to run that agency into the ground to the point that it almost had to furlough over 13,000 USCIS employees. On his watch, USCIS also ignored the Supreme Court's decision in June of 2020, stating that the Trump administration's attempt to rescind DACA was unlawful, holding new DACA applications at processing facilities even after the Supreme Court mandate was formally entered. And these are the witnesses that the majority brings to this subcommittee to discuss if, quote, the laws are being faithfully executed. Forgive my skepticism, or more bluntly, give me a break. Mr. Reichlin uh, Melnick, let me turn to you. I want to discuss mandatory detention. As discussed in your testimony, Section 235B1B of the Immigration and Nationality Act states that if an officer determines an individual has credible fear of persecution, that person, quote, shall be detained for further consideration of the application for asylum. That makes it sound like asylum seekers must be detained. Can you explain why all asylum seekers are in fact not detained? Thank you, Congresswoman. I think the main reason is resource-based. Um, though there's both resource and legal authorities, I should note. But the biggest issue here is resources. For example, if 50,000 asylum seekers show up at the border in any given month and every one of them asks for protection, there are not 50,000 detention beds. Um, even under in 2019, when detention was at its highest, there were 55,000 detention beds, and that year, 891,000 people were encountered uh, by the Border Patrol. And if even half of those were seeking asylum, it would not have been physically possible to detain all of them, which is why, under the Trump administration, hundreds of thousands of asylum seekers were released straight to court without going through the credible fear process. So this is, at the end of the day, it is a resource issue. And I will also note it is a legal issue because there are always exceptions to mandatory detention because Congress, generally speaking, can't force the, ex the executive to enforce the law in certain circumstances where that is literally impossible. Has any administration, Democratic, Republican, ever been able to detain every single individual as required by the section of the Immigration and Nationality Act? No. And in fact, when Congress first passed that provision in 1996, there were actually fewer than 10,000 detention beds. And this is at a time when there were routinely 1.6 to 1.7 million border patrol apprehensions a year. So it was not possible when Congress passed the law. It's not been possible any time over the last 27 years, and it's still not possible today. And it's correct, isn't it, that even at our highest levels of detention under the Trump administration, it was never close? That's right. Um, you know, in 2019, uh, the Trump administration maxed out detention beds, about 55,000 in August 2019. Um, that month, there were uh, more than 55,000 people who arrived. And we also have to note that the average time that a person spent in detention was uh, over a month. So the average detention bed in ICE detention only turned over about 10.7 times a year. So there was a max capacity that they could hold, even at 55,000 beds, of less than half a million, and that year about 900,000 people showed up. So that's why the Trump administration, in fact, released hundreds of thousands of people. So that's a lot of numbers. Um, let me just ask you bluntly, many of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle like to claim the Trump administration ended what they call catch and release and detained all asylum seekers or sent them back to Mexico. Let me just ask you again, is that accurate? And just a simple yes or no answer is fine. And if not, um, you've already given us some of the reasons, but is that accurate? Uh, it's not accurate, and even in 2020, after Title 42 went into effect, several thousand people were released, according to data from DHS. 
From your testimony, it appears there is a detailed chart which shows that the Trump administration released over 500,000 migrants at the border during his four years as president. Is that correct? That is correct. That's directly from the border. And additional were released, were held in ICE detention, and then released. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.